this is a better location. So. How big is our current lot where the shop is currently? I know you showed us last time, but I can't remember how. Yeah, I think it was like 60, <coughs> 60 by 160, something like that. But a lot of it is a road that somebody's using on the east side. 60 by 160? Yeah. That's a new one? 325 you're looking at? Huh? The ones you're looking at, how big are they? They'd be like 75 by 150. Pretty similar size. So, I don't think there's much different. Yeah. Uh, you know, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, what, what do we park up there right now? We have just uh, the grader and the maintainer and what else? Uh, in the winter time, we put a plow truck up there, but it's not a heater. <coughs> there's like two sheds there, and a little walkway in between the two sheds. And on one side we heat, and the other side we store that snow plow that we very seldom use up there. Keep it plugged in or whatever. So. The other side, the windows are all busted out, and we just haven't maintained it. In the summertime, we don't put anything in there. <clears throat> a lot of stuff by the elevator would be inviting for somebody else to pick up there. I think they would be worth more than what we would have into the other lots that are getting completed. So. <coughs> Or how, what kind of a time frame do we have to use the plans by? 
if we engineer it now? Uh, it's generally good for a couple of years. Um, yeah, um, cultural is good for typically six years, I think. I'm just, <laughs> from the aspect of, you know, we are talking about the possibility of having to do the box culverts and the culvert replacements on four and eight and three, and if we have to do that, we might have to shift some of that money instead of putting it in the eight and using it on that instead. So if we yeah. put the money in the engineering and the engineering's no good, we don't have the cash to get back to it, that'd be stranding. Sure. Decent good amount of money. <coughs> so I just don't know. I, I mean, yeah. the problem is, is we don't know right now going forward what we're going to have to do on the others. Can we hold, do we have to engineer now or can we hold off for a little while? Or I guess we can hold off as long as, until we have the funding in place. In other words, if we had the budget for it in 2017 or whatever situation. They give us a recommendation on what should happen there and I guess there's really no timeline to it. We could even do nothing but face the liability issues if you do that. Well, yeah. If you don't do anything, then they can come at you. Right. Say so you, you have to do something that lost. But you, you can wait till you have your funding in place to do it. Well, I'm just looking at it from the aspect of, you know, eight's not in horrible shape. It's, it's in pretty decent shape still. And if we're going to have to do something with that at some point in time, more than likely, you know, I think at some point in time, this state money is going to run out. Yeah. You know, but we're not going to keep getting two and a half or three million dollars every session. So it would be prudent to use the money that we have now in a way that we can accomplish what we need to accomplish over what we feel we'd like to accomplish. And it, this is one that we have a uh, program for our federal federal dollars that we get from like Brad Fuchs. But again, we can use that towards the culvert also. Um, yeah, right. it's a thought. And it all comes back to we have no clue what the stream crossing standard yep, is going to tell us at this point in time. We don't, so yeah. It's kind of tough to shoot in the dark, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, the culvert, the structure itself was included in the uh, proposal. So okay. uh, we can do it in phases, we can do it however we want to. Okay, so this this will take care of updating that one on eight already. That then. one on eight, not the other. Not the four or the three, but the right. one on eight to be updated yeah. as part of this proposal. Okay. okay. And this one's in really good shape than the box is. Mm -hmm. Not, not falling apart at all, and it's, you know, it's pretty good size, but I don't, there is a pretty good size scour ball on the south side, so I'm guessing it's undersized, but I don't know what it would take to bring it up. So if you can either knock part of it off and it's going to gas in place, or if it's just a little bit undersized, maybe you could get by putting in a couple metal culverts next to it. I don't know if well, as long as the engineering is good for a decent amount of time, I, it's going to be less than 100,000, and I'm comfortable with doing the engineering. Diagram on the engineer here. Well, it's great. Well, it, I don't know if the state laws change, but other than that, the environmental stuff is good for you know, a few years at least. How many? We said six. Well, for the six for archaeological. Okay. Typically. Yeah. The, and that gives us time to get it done. So. Very good. But the, but the wetland stuff might change quicker than that. I don't know how long we're good for. Okay. We have a motion and a second on that. KLJ for board for engineering. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. So that will stop with you, Kevin, and we'll go ahead and move forward with this appraised on the county property. Uh, I think everybody has a sheet. Anybody in the crowd that's interested with it, they can pick one up right there on the <coughs> right now. First parcel on there in Edmore City, lot 11, block 20, home edition. $160 is the total tax that owed. Anybody want to bid that? They bid a dollar higher? No, they can bid 160. They bid 160. Okay. Anybody here want to bid $160 on that parcel? Okay. Um, Lot 12, Block 21, Home Edition, $130. The minimum bid. You have a bid there with that gentleman. Uh, what did we go before? $5 or $10? Or Is there anybody else wanting to bid in? Yeah, I'll look later. Well, let's just. Wait, 
the name? Uh, Stephen Hill. Lot and City, lots 16 and 17, lot 2, $335. Up on the screen if they don't Anybody want to bid on that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Hill. Anybody else going to raise his bid? Okay, so. Block 21, block 3. $200. Mr. Hill. Lot three, block six, hundred eighty-five dollars. <laughs> I'll just take over. <laughs> Anybody want to raise a bid? The owner, I guess. Lot six through ten, block nine, Stoltz, first edition, seven hundred fifteen dollars. We're still in lot. Takers. Lots 19 through 22, block 9, Stoltz, first edition. $570. No takers. Okay, that's it. So basically, we need a motion to accept the bids that are proposed. So, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Whichever. <laughs> 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 And then, Stephen, if you would go through the door into the auditor's office, she has you sign some stuff, and Candy will take care of you. Hey, congratulations. Yeah. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Forward, motion carried. Very good. Uh, Kevin, go ahead. Um, Today we had our first webinar training, so everybody was crowded around a computer screen. So I'm thinking I'm going to look into getting one of those big televisions like that, because that's oh, kind yeah. of the way things are going. Uh, webinars. So just a heads up that I'll be looking for advice on TV and whatever it takes to get hooked up to those webinars. And then the last thing I have, uh, rental tractors, I'm going to start uh, asking around to see what we can get for prices for rental tractors next summer. So far John Deere has told us that they'll do it for the same price as last year. So I thought I would at least approach the other dealers in town and see if they're interested. Okay. That's all I have. Questions for Kevin? Thank you. Thank you. We have a uh, tax abatement at 6 o'clock, so I want to have you people start with your presentation on juvenile justice and tenure care until after that. So, you know, you're only going to take four minutes. That's what I think. Problem? Uh, well, I don't think it'll be that long. It will it be very long. Uh, we probably need more time than that. <laughs> think you'll need more time than that? That's all I told you last night was one. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she told us 40. <laughs> okay, let's go down to approval of the letter of transfer. So moved. Second. The motion and the second. Any other questions on it? All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. All opposed. Motion carried. Uh, approval of bills at like the uh, law enforcement center and uh, Johnson's control. Everybody got them? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the bill from the Law Enforcement Center and Johnson Controls. Any discussion? Roll call. Hi, sir. Hi. Martins. Aye. 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 Aye.
County Planning and Zoning Board. It doesn't take more than a few minutes, though. We have our meeting and we got a presentation from KLJ. They weren't the only uh, person who had proposal in, but they were the ones that showed up and um, they gave a good presentation. Uh, they've been involved in a lot of, of these types of things and um, we decided to move ahead and uh, ask for order to recommend them to the planning commission to go ahead with the update on our Ramsey County Comprehensive Plan. KLJ? KLJ. Good to see what kind of cost we're going to do with that. From there, 40,000. So. It's an extensive uh, proposal. There'll be public hearings, uh, meetings, uh, updates. We'll be getting a hold of the surrounding townships and getting them involved, inviting them to meetings. Um, we're hoping to have some kind of a presentation. Uh, in March to bring forward to the Township Officers Association meeting to uh, let them know how things are going with it. Um, uh, Joel Fonbeck is the person that's going to be put in charge of doing it. Of course, Paul will be assisting from here. So, Paul, do you have any other? Uh, <coughs> well, I guess Joel's got lots of experience in that area. Uh, they'll probably come up and spend an you know, extended period working out of our office uh, to get this going. So, um, he's, he's done a lot of similar work. He's work from where, Paul? West Fargo. West Fargo? Yeah. What kind of time frame are you looking at getting here? Probably here. <coughs> then that's depending on how often you meet. I mean, if you bring everybody in. Yeah, so we need to break the roll within a few months, so you can probably get it done quicker than that. But yeah. how many members on our board? Eighty-nine. Nine. 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 We're down to eight, but we've got a, something we're going to um, suggest here coming up. In all New business. We have some township people on that, right? Yeah. Yeah. John Martinson. Jim Ziegler and Eric Austin, isn't it? Yeah. And then we have two city people there, Dick Johnson and Chris Trenny on there as well. <coughs> Any other things to add about the ALG? You're happy with that? <coughs> Just got finished with one and uh, yeah. Had that on a fast track, so we got that done. And so he's going to come up here. His mother lives in Nicola, so she uh, is really happy if he gets this. So he can see him. What was his last name? Kwanda. He's excited to get going. I was impressed with his um, with his experience in, in the Fargo area. <laughs> Just got done with the same thing, wet gas and wet gas. Yeah, and wet gas. Okay. Any other questions? Any motion or second? All in favor make. say aye. Oh, it's already made. Oh, we haven't had a motion. I'll make the motion to oh, yeah. accept KLJ's okay. uh, uh, proposal. Okay. Have a motion. We have a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 I'll hold motion carries. Uh, the office you want to cover on that going line? <coughs> we could just as well go down to the new member on the board. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Ratzloff was a member on the board for oh, many yeah. years. Okay. And so we thought that it would probably be prudent for us to uh, have a tax director on the day. So we thought maybe we'd bring forward uh, to see if we could appoint. Of course, of course, you'll have to accept the appointment. 
I'll, I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Beth Black to the second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to that effect. Do we have a discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Anything else? Okay. Very good. That will move into the application for abatement of refund of taxes. Mm -hmm. The whole township. Um, again, I have a paper on it, right? A description, acres. Um, guess I didn't see any dollars involved here. Is there an idea what that is? Um, <clears throat> I don't have a dollars involved, but I do. Um, and Beth also recommended she can be here tonight, but she recommends we deny it due to the fact um, they received fifty-five thousand two hundred. These are the documentation if you want to look at it from United States Department of Interior Fish and Wildlife Services. In any time you accept over a certain dollar figure, you can't file for an abatement. That's one really? of the figures. And they also received. And that's a state law? Well, it's based on the North Dakota Century Code, and I can probably give her on the cell phone if you want to visit with her. Beth? Yeah. Yes. No, that's but the township did deny it. Did you want her? No, it was just, is Lonnie familiar with this? No, I'm not. And they also received this amount of dollars on that property. So what did they receive in total? It's a wetland reserve. In federal dollars. They, they enrolled it in WRP? Yep. $232,252. $232, Are they here at all? Hammond? No. <coughs> so I think they knew the township was going to deny it, so they didn't even show up. And $55,200. So it's about approximately two hundred and eighty-seven. <coughs> Do, do we have to approve it today, or does it does it have to be done today? You can deny it today. Well, I'm, just, I'm, just, we can table it. I'm just questioning. Can I? Can we table it for further information purposes, so we can look yeah. at the century you code and see if we're in the right on this, or consider it in the dark? But do we want depth to look into it? No, you can't receive. You can't receive more than a certain dollar amount per acre. It's and forty this, some thousand. This bar in excess of that. I'm just, I'm not familiar with this part of Century Court, I guess. That's no, I'm not either, but if you want Beth to report that tomorrow, I'm sure you can find it the next meeting. Yeah, yeah, I mean, two weeks isn't a big deal, I'm guessing, on this thing. So I, I'm going to make a motion to the table simply because I want to look into it for this. Okay. okay. Motion to the table for the next meeting, which would be um, oh, second motion. So the second motion. December 1st. December 1st, I think. Okay. Any other discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Um, with that, we'll go to uh, Rhonda. What um, you doing? Four minutes. Okay. Start now. Um, Adam Lifon, um, Patty Rimey, and Judge Fowdy and myself were um, Actually, starting back in September, Patty um, put together a grant application, and I, I helped her a little bit, uh, I should say. So we put together this grant application, and we ended up getting it. There were 30, 30 teams that applied, and seven got it. And there were teams from um, Boone County, Missouri, Durham, North Car Carolina, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, uh, Eau Claire County, Wisconsin, Lanca Lancaster County, Nebraska, Lynn County, and Iowa, and, and then uh, Surrounding County, North Dakota. And the purpose of the, um, it was sponsored by the National Association of Counties. Lisa John are also um, the tenant care and juvenile justice person that receives a grant at the North Dakota Association of Counties took us off about the grant and thought that we should try for it. Um, it brought, brought together teams of county officials and local partners to learn about best practices in serving justice involved youth in contact with the behavioral health system and the child welfare system and to create an action plan to increase collaboration and the coordination of services between everyone in the community. 
Um, so we put together, um, I'm getting close to four minutes. So we put together two priorities. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was very, I talk fast anyway. It was very, um, very good presenters. Um, it was a full, um, we started off at eight in the morning, eight to five, and then eight to one. It was a full day and a half. Um, unbelievable presenters about um, juvenile justice and youth entering the juvenile justice system. They talked a lot about the dual kids, and those are, ki those are kids that are in the juvenile justice system only after they've been in the um, social service system, of course, for many years. So that, that was sad. I know Adam mentioned we were meeting before this meeting that one of the statistics that stood out to him was seven. Can you tell us what that was again? I believe, if my memory is not easy, that there was a study done, I believe it was in Pennsylvania, where they, they looked at these dual youth uh, and uh, they had a, a large sample size, 2,000 youth, and they did mental health assessments on all of these youth because, you know, it's the thought process that there's mental health or addiction or treat services that are going to be needed by these youth. And 70% of the youth had at least one mental health services issue that needed to be dealt with. And I think it was something like 50% had at least two and 30% had three. And they hadn't been dealt with. And they hadn't been dealt with. And that's, you know, they're, they're, essentially they were trying to figure out the root of the problem as to what services do we need to provide these kids so that we can make sure they don't contact the system again and divert them. Yeah, and that was a big part of a lot of the conversation was diverting kids from the system in the first place, early intervention, and that's going to be part of our efforts to identify our stakeholders in that early intervention and then collect data. Um, and then our second priority is to get a tenant care up and running so that we can also collect data and identify those youth and, youth and hopefully divert them out of the system by identifying what their needs are at the tenant care level when they come into contact with law enforcement or social services. So um, I don't know if you have anything to add. Um, it was a great day and a half. We hope to get going. We're going to meet again and identify our stakeholders and visit with them. Um, a lot of the uh, one of the counties, Boone County, uh, Missouri, passed a tax, a sales tax, specifically by the people. It was passed by the people for children and family services and juvenile justice services. And I, I, a quarter percent. A quarter percent. $6.2 million is collected annually for children, children's services, juvenile justice. So they had, a, they had a lot of cash to figure out how to spend in the best way. So that was kind of, yeah. And how are they collecting this? Sales tax order. In Missouri, they have the ability to uh, do a countywide sales tax. And it was a vote of the people that they wanted to do it. So yeah. they actually collect a sales tax on all purchases. $6.2 million a year they raise to, to run just to juvenile services. What towns in this county? Columbia. So it would be where the University of Missouri is. I think they, the population was something in that half million yeah. range. Do you have any idea how they sold this to the people? They brought. That was a very, we kind of asked that, that question, that how, that how did you get it done, kind of thing, and, and I don't recall what their answer she was. She said that the, the commissioners felt that there was, their leaders thought there was probably some taste for it, so to speak, but they wanted it to come from the people, and so they, it was a grassroots yeah. organization, or grassroots people that went around and lobbied for it, and they put it to a vote, and it, it went. Yeah, they, they said something about they have it was a couple, they, yeah, they thought instead of doing it top down, they just they had a bunch of volunteers that were really on board with it, really wanted it done, and they went out and they canvassed and they talked to people and they sold it and sold it and sold it. They thought this would lower the crime in the county. Is that kind of what they were going by? Or? No, yeah. it was it was well, it was for the purposes of serving youth, and, yeah. and one of the objectives on almost any system is is to try to keep that youth away from a judge. I mean, that's right. I mean, that's one of the primary objectives of the juvenile court is to keep them away from a judge because a judge, once you're, once the judge starts making decisions, then that kid gets a record and all kinds of things happen after that. So a lot of these, this program is diversionary type programming. So if they're in kind of some kind of trouble, I mean, you have school systems that you know, kids get in fights and stuff like that. In, in one location, that kid may be charged with simple assault or disorderly conduct. In another location, that system may, the school may adjust or may have their own programming within the context of the school system to deal with those types of problems. So, and those are the better, those are where you have the better outcomes when the other systems are working internally to deal with problems that they may have. Just shocks me that 
you know, they, they, they get sell it to the people in the county. Well, I mean, well, sales tax, which is a great idea. Yeah, it's just the thought process is that if you divert the youth up front, you're going to stop that. The, oh, them running into the jail system, and then you're not going to have incur the cost of having to fund the jail to the per, you know to the tune of what you have to if you can hopefully divert those youth early. You know, and then the, the next what they said kind of you know they have decent data on what their outcomes are, but their their next steps were really to get good data to show what's occurring in the interplay in the building. And I guess one of my objectives of this whole program is 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 that we start collecting the appropriate data. I mean, I want. I want evidence-based models or, or assessment tools so that we can start assessing, you know, what kind of problems are there so we can make arguments for, you know, enhanced services from the state of North Dakota or for some or from somebody else. Like, I mean, those are the things. That's the whole idea. Yeah, you're right, Judge. Yeah, shameless plug. And we want early services, and that's what we're talking about, building more jails. It was very um, fascinating for me um, and took all I had not to say anything to watch people very proudly touting their million, 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 I don't know how many million dollar jails when we don't have enough behavioral health for people to do something different at the North Dakota State Association of Counties meeting. So shameless plug, and then I promise I'll stop. We put together our what agency. Are you doing fine? Our so agency has been working fine. for a while. <laughs> Thanks. Our agency has been working for a while on short-term case management services to divert people even out of the juvenile court system. Because again, we know that kids in foster care, seventy percent of them are dead before they're thirty, and um, that's bad. That's one statistic that we have. Um, and those of those thirty percent, a lot of them end up in the prison system. So we really need kids to stay with their parents in in good homes and provide services to divert them from the system altogether. I was going to add one thing. The people that presented there in the context that we have now encouraged us. So we do have some good contacts now nationally if we want to look for things. And one example is I've been searching the internet and kind of looking around for an evidence-based program for young girls late on um, like later elementary, early middle school, because that is such a problem time for them. And one of the women that were there, she sent me two things like within five minutes, and they're just really great programs instead of recreating the wheel, like preventative things for girls. So um, they encouraged us, you know, to reach out and get that kind of information when we need it or we want to. So I think that's just one important part of it. Okay. Patty, what was the name of the program they talked about at the Human Service Center meeting where uh, the, uh, they were getting, uh, they were dealing with on a, on a very family level and they would have a social worker go out and getting all these services for people? Yes. What was the name of the program? Yes. Her, yeah. Yes. Yes, the, yes is the name of the program. Yes, yes. yes. that yes. didn't go through, but it's different no, 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 partnership. No, the yes. partnership. Oh, partnership. Program. The partnership oh, program. partnership, yes. The partnership program, yeah. they were talking about this program. This partnership program was a, uh, was a program where you're really in the field and you're dealing with family on a very local, very direct way. So if family needs services, they need transportation, whatever it is, they're providing all these services. And they're having really good success with it. And the only surprising thing about it that I that I found surprising that is they only had uh, how many people working on it? Two people. Two. Two people, and it, and it was and and they were seeing success. But one of the reasons they only have two people is because they're really not measuring their needs. They're not measuring what you know what what the uh, what the data what the data can show you. And it was it seemed to me to be a very productive way of productive resources. The, that we have two wraparound case management model right. workers in our agency too. That's um, Christy, we use that same model. Um, I would, yeah, I think that that's run lots of different ways in lots of different human service centers. Mm -hmm. And that was what Dr. Dorner was talking about doing right. a, a study on the efficacy of the model. And I'm curious what he's going to find out. I wouldn't want to let you out here without asking, how is the attendant care facility doing there? Are we uh, close to having it up and well, running? Kevin, we got Kevin helping now. So. <laughs> We're getting it on then. Well, um, are you a plumber all of a sudden? <laughs>
Oh, yeah, that's a good question. We're gaining ground with that. We are. Okay, good. We're hopeful. The I talked to somebody last night that might help with the plumbing. Well, she said she needed a person. And <laughs> okay. Well, we're hopeful. She she thinks this week the plumbing's going to get done, so we're hopeful. We're hopeful. We're close, Thanks. very Thanks. close. Thanks. Faster than we've ever moved before, so I guess I'm not complaining. That's good. That's good. Yeah, we'll, Thank you. Be very happy to see how this taking care of silly works out. Yeah, we're excited. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Rock and permits? That whole rock? Yes. So is this in conjunction with some other group or something? Why are we from? Why are we doing it at Woodland Resort from Miami? Well, I looked at the dates. The dates are the same date as. Um, Shiver Fest, but then on the bottom it says maintain lake access in the winter. So are they donating money to lake access? <laughs> Who's sponsoring? Probably a bit of electrical work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they probably that's what they're doing. Got a bunch of electrical guys that want to go fishing. Okay, we're gonna prove it or. <laughs> Go ahead, Bill. Uh, Wait. We have a motion to approve the RAP permit. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Uh, this was the year is what is it? Approved. Approved Blue Cross Blue Shield Health Credit. Right. In conjunction with our Blue Cross Blue Shield, we also offer to our employees, if they work out 12 times a month, they get $20 from the county paid. Yes, their, their, their fees. So I just need a motion to approve it. We've been doing this for a long time. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Motion carries. School medical redundant spending. You, you, did, is that covered at all then? No. 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 No, no. Maybe we had a lot of questions. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, no, I'm for it. I'm all for it. pretty cut and dried with the deal, but. It'll work out. It doesn't cover the whole uh, oh. admission or whatever. Mm. No. I was going to say $20. $20. They all go broke. Yeah, $20 covers 12 <laughs> Okay, uh, we have enough questions? <laughs> <laughs> Approved medical dependent spending. Go ahead. Elizabeth. Basically, every year we have Noridian come in, or we do it on the website. To um, it, members can take out of their check, put it into a medical spending account. So above and beyond what you're, say, if you go to the hospital and you have two hundred dollars that Blue Cross Blue Shield does not pay for, you can send it into medical spending if you choose to do medical or dependent spending. That's up to the employee themselves. But the county has teeth in it, I want to say, because of the fact if for some reason they bankrupt their account in May and they leave us in July, if they use their whole year, the county has to eat the difference due to the fact the IRS regulations, the cafeteria plan. So, and we don't have very many that do it, but we do once in a while. So, so what's, what, what are we approving then? You're approving the medical and dependent spending that the county... That will allow them to do the accounts? Right, right. Is this kind of like the HSA where you... Yes. It's, it's pre-tax then? Yes, so it's you the can, same. You're just saving the tax dollars. Right. right, and the county saves tax dollars too, so... I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the medical dependent spending. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carry. Okay, I think we're down to... Uh, audit, auditor to update the board on the levies. Okay, I got a report here for you. I just finished them late today, so these are just the county mills. Oh, I didn't, sorry. If you look on the first sheet, um, it's 111.65, and 
and last year they were 125.07, so we're down 13.42. And then if you look at the second page, and these are just the 12,000 numbers. The first page, it has three of them. The ones that are highlighted are not 12,000 numbers, so those are based on like soil conservation garrison, and the state mill is certified to us by the state. The one is the state mill the garrison is not certified by the county. It's a garrison and the state melody. Um, so 108.02, so we're minus 7.77% 7 from last year. And you'll see the facts. What did you say? Please? You'll see it on the second page here. Okay, third page. There's a formula that we have to do because of publication. So it's it's like two percent less than the last report I gave you. I think it was five point seven nine. I think. Right. So it's down. And you'll notice the fluctuation from 2012, 13, 14. Some years I don't levy as much. And some funds, if they have a carryover, and then the next year, there's some funds that don't need more money. So, if there's carryover one year, we let it less. <coughs> next year, they're down maybe to two hundred dollars. So you have to bring their meals back up. So, so if there's any questions on that, and and you'll see which meals were combined into the general. And last year, if I calculate all of the meals that were not in the general, but now they're considered the general fund. They were 39.90, so I'm down 1.50 because I did an estimate on the carryover what we're going to have this year, and we should be fine. And the city is going down 3.38 because I just emailed back and forth with Terry to make sure we're on the same page. They're down 3.38. The school is up 4.95, and the park, I'm still waiting for them to get back to me, if they're okay with what the levy is. 4.95%? So, no, $4.95 mills, I'm sorry. Oh, mills. They put on a miscellaneous mill, which they can go up to 12 without a vote of the people. And they did publicize it. And they did <coughs> The city went down 3.38 mills, not yeah. percent. Mills, I'm sorry, not percent. And we ended up 7.7 7, 7 Yeah, percent mills. down. No, mills were down 13.4. Any questions about that? Good news for... Yeah. And then I was asked by um, Susie at the chamber to ask you if a tour of the city plaza on December 7th at 4 p.m. would work for the county commission. December 7th? Yes. I think that's all of Monday. A tour of the city plaza? Oh, Walmart. Oh, Walmart. 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 December 7th, Monday. Oh, yeah. In the plaza. Is there a hardware store out there already? Um, yeah, well, it's not open. Yeah, it's, it's not open. Four p.m. That's not open. Yeah, She'll send me out when she gets everybody. Yeah, you should just an email. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be. <coughs> I think they're going to be sending them. Yeah. 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 Oh, good. Looking good out there then, huh? Yes, yeah, looking very good. And then also you got the invitation from the airport to look at the new truck they're going to be doing tomorrow night. That's tomorrow night. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was all I had. There's the oil thing tomorrow at 10.30 on the five chains of river. Okay. Oil thing? Yep. What is the oil thing? I just got the invitation. For oil on the ground? No. no. <laughs> I, I can take oil on the ground. Is that what you're trying to do? The um, oil industry in North Dakota, and it's that sounds the future of North Dakota. At 10 30 tomorrow morning. Just putting that on. Which one might Mike Dunn is hoping to do that. Oh, yeah, I saw something.
Okay. Anything else? Any other announcements? Commissioners, any other announcements? Fire truck. Fire truck. Fire truck. Yeah. It's a $750,000 piece of machinery, and uh, I think we're the only one in North Dakota that has it. How much? $750,000. <laughs> I better go look the, at it. <laughs> and, the way, and the way we got it was that this Rosenbauer was going head to head with, uh, I think it was Oshkosh, and Oshkosh was winning all the bids. And in our bid specs, we only needed a 1,500 gallon truck, and it didn't need to have a turret or anything like that on it. It just uh, had to be ARC compliant. And Osh, or Rosenbauer was so tired of losing the bids to Oshkosh that they upped that to a 3,000 gallon truck instead of a 1,500 gallon truck. This truck can go into fire and spray water on the windshield or keep the windshields in the underneath of the cooler. It sprays water on the ground as it goes into the fire. And it can pierce into a building and spray any kind of flame retardant or deterrent that you need. Right out of its own capability. And uh, it's just six airport. But it's a, and it's a six by six, and it can get out to the runway, out to a fire on any place on that runway in less than 30 seconds. And it'll be out at the airport all the time. Now. It's out at the airport all the time. At the last airport meeting, I asked that they look over their policies and stuff like that so that that thing could go out on the highway and help uh, just in case there was something on tanker truck or something that's filled on the highway that that thing would be able to go off, off the site to do it. And John's looking into it to make sure that, that we uh, don't have any problem, any issues with that. That, that. that truck is amazing. And just simply because the two big companies that built it got into a head-to-head -head match and they gave us that truck for, they gave us that truck for a lesson.
Hey, anything else? 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 Anything